guys, Lise here and this is a tutorial video on how to use Freedcamp and Todoist together to manage your freelance clients. So the first place that you want to start is with Freedcamp and you can open a free account with them by coming to freecamp.com and registering to do that. So I'm just going to log in and then we'll get stuck into what it looks like to set this up. And once you're signed in, you should be presented with something similar. Now, this will depend on whether you've set anything up. If you've never used Freecamp before, then you'll it'll just basically be a blank screen. I have my stuff separated by personal projects that I'm working on and then stuff that's sort of related to my Outsource Freelancing Success brand. So you can see that there are a couple of things sitting there right now. What I'm going to do is take you through the process of how I go about setting up a free camp project from start to finish and then how I then integrate that into Todoist. So the first thing that you just would do is come and set up a new project. I'm going to click on that and it asks you automatically which group you want to assign that to. So if you don't want that assigned to anything then you can just delete that um, or you can set that under your personal stuff instead. Um, you would give it a project name so I'm just going to go freelance client test. You can also give it a description. And then the next thing that you're asked is how do you like to see your task list? So they won't actually look exactly like this. It's just whether you like um, a to-do list like this or the sticky note type version. Um, I always prefer this one where I can just drag and drop things around. So I'm going to choose to go with that and click next. And then at this point, you can invite clients to the project. Um, you can add them here, and they can be these three different ones. I always put most of my clients in at a team player level, and then if they are in asking to have other people added, then I would just um, make them an organizer so that they don't go and delete things that they're not meant to. So if you don't want to add anyone, if you're just doing this for yourself, then you just go next. And then it will tell you that you have created it. So you can go straight to the project or you have this option to install more apps. So basically how Freecamp make their money is by offering you these apps that you can either choose to purchase. There's a whole bunch that are free. Um, and then there's a whole bunch, obviously, that are then paid. So you can do quite a lot with all the free stuff. So if you are looking to track time um, against something that's free, if you want to add a milestone one that's free, um, and then you know there's a couple of others here, you can also see more in their marketplace. So once you've chosen all of these, then you can go ahead and click done, and then it will create your project. You can choose to have a different color, um, we would go and click edit project and you'll see this little box here um, choose the color of the clients book choose the color of the clients logo whatever makes sense to you and click edit project once you've done that once that initial part is set up this is what it looks like if you have chosen the sticky note version. If you've chosen the to-do list sort of task list, it will look like this. And you can switch between these use at any time. So it would look like this. So if you had a whole bunch of tasks, um, that's where this is the view that it would look like. And it gives you everything sort of down the side here. So you can choose to invite more people here. And you can also drag this information in. There is a discussions tab. A files tab now these ones you would have had to have chosen them in the apps they are free and a calendar which is pretty handy and you can choose to sync it with your Google Calendar which I would definitely recommend that you do these are the four things that I use you could choose to like I said there was a milestones one and there is the time tracking one those are both free and they would um, appear along here and if you want to do that after the fact you can click on this the wall you just need to be a little bit aware of anyone that belongs to this group which is for instance this is outsource freelancing success so not just the people within this project but anyone that's associated with this if you type anything here on the wall everybody will see it so I generally steer clear of that and just tell my clients when I invite them to just focus on these four tabs only so 
when I'm working with a new client, the first thing that I will do is I'll actually set up all the tasks before I even invite them. So I'll go ahead and do all of that first up. Now, there's two ways that you can do that, and it really depends on how you like to work. If your project is just sort of one focus area, then you're just going to have a whole bunch of tasks that relate to that. If it's sort of got a couple of different areas that you're working in, then you might like to create a few different groups and then tasks under those groups. So what I mean by that is, for instance, if I was working with an author and we were talking about launching their book, then I would create um, a group of tasks called, I'm going to go into manage task groups because that's where you would add them. I would call it pre-launch book launch um, post launch. So you can go ahead and um, set those all up. So then what happens is it creates all these little subgroups within your tasks that you can then go ahead and create all of those tasks under. So it really depends on what you're doing with your client as to how you want that to work for yourself. It's pretty simple. You just go ahead and create a new task and maybe you're going to um, copy right about page and then you might list some of the little mini tasks associated with that, which are, wait for client to provide information. So you just write this down for your own notes. And then down here is where you can assign it to the client. So if you haven't invited the client yet, you would just go everyone. Um, you can choose which type of priority it is and you can choose a due date. So I'm just going to do that. You could also at this point add some files in here, but if you're waiting for the client, then um, you don't need to worry about that. And there you go, it sits right in there. Now, if we were looking at the list view or the to-do list, this is what it would look like instead. So you can see the due date, see straight away who it's for and if there are any comments. Um, so it really just comes down to how you like to work. So then it is literally as simple as moving this across into in progress once you've started working on that. And then if you need to comment or talk to the client about anything, you would do that down in here. And then you can choose to notify people. Just make sure that this, if there was another person here, it would be ticked. And then you go add comment. You can also add files to comments as well. But I try to keep my clients' files in one spot. So I ask them um, in my FredCamp onboarding video to make sure that they upload files here rather than clogging up the task area. So once that's done, that would then go into completed and then move on to the next task. So you can see how quickly um, FredCamp works in terms of just managing all of this. Um, you can move something back if it needs to be dealt with um, and you can choose to see how this looks like in the calendar. You can see that it goes down there. So really simple to set up. Um, you can have as many projects as you want. And the great thing about FreeCamp is that every time someone copies or adds something to the project, you are also sent an email notification. So you can also keep track of that. So that's how I use FreeCamp. And you could leave it here. You wouldn't necessarily have to go forward and do what I'm about to do, but it really comes down to how you work. So the next part of this process is bringing in Todoist. So I'm just going to go and grab that for you now. So this is my Todoist app. So I've got it downloaded onto my Mac, but you can also use it in the web view. And I will show you how to do that. And they also have an app on um, for iPad, Android, smartphone, whatever it is that you want to have. So this is the web-based view, but I prefer to use the app view. So I'm just going to open that back up again. So basically what you can do is, and you, again, you could also use Todoist in the same way that I've used FreeCamp. Um, it's really up to you. What I, How I like to use FreeCamp is to set up the sort of main tasks and then all the little mini tasks that are relevant to me 
that don't need input from the client or that just um, make up my day, I will come in Todoist and create them. So I have Todoist Premium and that costs about $44 a year to have access to. And basically all that, um, what that allows you to do is create all these projects. You can create labels, you can add comments, you can add files. Um, it just allows you to do a bit more. The free version is still pretty good. Um, I think there's a minimum, sorry, the maximum projects that you can have with all these different colors is about five. So it really comes up to you, comes back to what you want to do. So what I would then do is come in and add a project, um, freelance test client and you can choose to um, choose a color from here I'm going to go with this blue um, add project and then it automatically populates that here so I would come in here and say start draft about page and then I'd probably add a label that says that this is going to be client work and then I'm going to be working on it. So the due date in free camp was the 28th, but I'm obviously going to be working on that for the next few days. So I would probably go every week day at 7 a.m. is when I'm going to be doing that. So this actually sets up a recurring task. I can come in here and add a whole bunch of content comments if I wanted to. Um, and this will basically, every time I tick this off, it will then move across to the next day. So I just come in here and fill all of this up. So any little task that is associated with the client project is where it comes into to do it. So that would be one part. So then I might be looking at um, research copy for video. And then again, I would add the label so I can get it working. And then this just might be a one-off task that I'm going to do. Um, so I would add that to there. The other labels that you could also add, um, if you want to take it a little bit further, for me particularly, I do um, I have four first morning action blocks so I'm going to come in here and go this is a second second morning action block so that's looking at it from the project view if I wanted to see um, you know all the tasks associated with all of these projects I would then click on today and it tells me what I've got going on today so it tells me based on the project, um, tells me what other things are going on. You can also look ahead for the next seven days. So you'll see there's that freelance test client and that's showing up there. So to do is just more what I use for all the little mini tasks associated with what I'm going to be doing. And then I always update the client at the end of the week in Read Camp. So I'll just take you back to there. So then what I would do is probably pop into discussions and just add a discussion that says end of week one. You would probably put the date as well. Um, update on So you can choose to make this a sticky, which means it stays at the top. Um, and you can also choose to notify someone if you had already added the client in there. And then you would click Submit, and then that adds that discussion in there. And if I click back on Discussions tab, you can see there it is there. And you can choose, if you click on the star, that will make it a sticky. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, if it doesn't, just leave a message in the comments below, and I will talk to you more about it. And thank you for watching.